Karen Bryan for M. Mahid. I'm here with former Strike Force champ Misha Tate, who will be taking on Julie Kedzie on August 18th. And, you know, I, there's so much drama going on right now in the ladies' divisions, but I, I'm curious how you feel you match up with Julie and what kind of fight you're expecting. Um, you know, I she's has a lot of footage out there on her. She's been around for a long time. She's definitely not someone that I'm unfamiliar with. I've been watching her for years. Um, we both, I'm surprised we haven't run into each other sooner. You know what I mean? Honestly, I think she's been fighting for a couple years more than I have, but I've been here almost six. So I think it was a long time, you know, due. And uh, I'm really excited to fight her. I mean, I think she's tough. Um, I think that she comes with a great cardio and I think she's strong. I think she's tough. I think skill set wise, you know, I think that I have the advantage. I just, I think I have the edge in the wrestling. I think I have the edge on the ground. I think I have the edge on the feet. But maybe I'm a little biased. I don't know. But we'll see come uh, August 18th. So the other day in Vegas, I saw Scott Coker and we were both talking about the fact that we couldn't believe that you were ready to even fight yet. So how is the elbow? How's the arm? And, and how long did it take you till you could get back there and actually work out full strength? Well, I'm really proud to um, be making a comeback so soon. You know, it definitely took a lot of work. And I mean, a lot of work goes into my training camps, but a lot of work went into this injury rehabilitation. And it definitely wasn't something that I took lightly. You know, I literally followed to a T what the doctors told me. I went to all my physical therapy sessions. I iced the crap out of it. I mean, I literally was like, man, I got to get back on, you know, because I was eager. You know, I mean, having something like that happen is kind of a, you know, it was a big bump for me. And I realized the only way to get over that is to pick myself up and get moving as quick as possible. And so, um, you know, I've been training for this training camp. I've been able to do everything at 100%, and I haven't had any residual effects, so I'm really, really excited about that. And I can't wait to get out there on the 18th and show that I'm good. Yeah. What, what hurt more, losing the fight, losing the belt, or, or the fact that you had to lose it to Ronda Rousey? I think it was a combination. It was about the worst thing that could happen ever. But, um, you know, all honesty, like, I mean, I respect her for her skill set, and I realize that what she, what she does do, she's probably the best in the world at. But, um, you know, I fear the arm bar even less, if that makes any sense. And if I get in there again, um, I really want another shot at her because I think that I have the tools. I believe I can still beat her. I mean, she has what she has, but I have what I have. And I think it was a competitive fight up until that point. And uh, I want another shot. I really do. Well, so like I started at the beginning saying there's some drama going on. There's some talk back and forth between you guys about her issue of ESPN, the magazine, that she is nude on it. She had, prior to that, criticized women for for doing some nude pictures or the kind of pictures that they think she thought was maybe exploitative or whatever. So if you would like to state your position on where you stand and, and what's going on with you two. I just get so tired of Rhonda criticizing everyone else. I think we should all just live our lives and I don't really care what, what she does or what anyone else does. You know, it's not our place to judge. I'm just sick of hearing her mouth off about other girls this and that and Kim that and the Playboy girls this. I'm just like, just shut up. Like, it, it, to me it's so stupid that you would talk crap about Rain Girls doing Playboy, which, you know, I mean, that's kind of what their appeal is. It's a sex appeal. And for an athlete, there's no real reason to want to get ne necessary to get root... Uh can we cut that? <laughs> there's no there's no real reason to have to get nude, although I think there's nothing wrong with ESPN. I don't think what Rhonda did was wrong. I'm just saying it's not okay to talk crap about the ring girls and then get 1% less naked and say it's okay. To me, it kind of falls in that hypocrisy, you know what I mean? So that was just my, my qualm with her. But do you see how people make that argument of artful nude? You know, you know there's Robert Maplethorpe photography and then there's porn photography. Do you know what I'm saying? There's there's different kinds of artistic naked and I and and I'm just curious how, if you know if you sort of consider that or not, if that doesn't matter. I understand. I mean, yeah, there is different, you know, I mean, I have, I think Playboy obviously sells for a different reason generally than ESPN magazine, but I also think, you know, when Rhonda's, you know, I'll pick up an you know, issue to see me artistically nude, I really don't believe that any straight man in the world looks at it and goes, "Oh, that is just a gorgeous athletic body." No, it's like, "Oh, man, you know, what can I see or what what's what is she barely left to the imagination?" I mean, it's still kind of giving off, you know, the very, very risque sex appeal. And that, to me, is really close to what the ring girls are doing. So I just think that she needs to shut up. If she wants to do something, don't point the finger at everyone else for doing what they want to do. But certainly, we've talked about this before. Being a female athlete, sexuality comes into it no regardless. I mean, even if you don't want it to be there. So it's certainly something that you have to live with. And, and I guess it's, I don't know, how difficult a line is it to walk between being sexy and, and playing up that part, but also being, you know, certain that you're taken seriously as the athlete. It's a really fine line to walk. And I think everyone's going to have their boundaries. I 
I certainly think that Sarah Kaufman's boundaries are different than mine, and mine are different than Rhonda's. And that's what makes the world an interesting place. If we were all the same, it would be really boring. So I, I don't see any problem with it, like I said. But also, you know, I'm not trying to, like, go out there and, like, accuse everyone else for whatever their career choices are. You know what I mean? It's just like, let it be. <laughs> just let everyone be. Stop running your mouth. All right. So where are you training for your fight? It's about a month away. So where are you working out? And what kind of fight uh, do you, you know, stylistically, are you going to be the same, Misha? Or are you trying to add some new looks to your game? Um... I really want to make it just a really, really exciting fight because I think for me, um, you know, to get back in the title running, I, I don't just need to win this fight. I need to win, win it in an impressive fashion. And, I mean, Julie Kedzie is no slouch. Anyone that's been following this career, obviously, she's ranked in the top ten. She's a tough opponent. And for me to be able to go out there and put, you know, an exclamation point on the win, I think will get me back into the title running quickly. So that's really all that I can predict. I'm not going to put a game plan even together, really, for this fight because I want just whatever comes to come naturally. All right. Well, good luck. We will be there. I can't wait. It's going to be great. Thank you, guys.